A Doe State PDP asks party leadership to zone presidential ticket to the South South. Also, Senator Mao Ohabonwa labels party defectors from the APC to the PDP as bread and butter politicians. And reps consider allowing Nigerians to bear firearms. Are we really ready for that? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cole. The chairman of the Edo State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Tony Aziegbemi, has urged the national leadership of the party to zone the presidency to the South-South zone as 2023 approaches. Meanwhile, Senator Mao Ohabonwa, who represented Abia North in the 8th Senate, had described those defecting from the People's Democratic Party to the APC as bread and butter politicians. Well, to discuss this with me is Deputy Spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party, uh, Diron Odeyemi, and uh, the Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Edo State, Tony Aziegbemi. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm happy to be here this evening. All right. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Azegbemi. Um, the chapter of your party in your state uh, is insisting that the party zones this 2023 presidential elections to the South-South. Uh, why do you want that to happen? Well, let me first of all thank you for having me. Um, I think it's, it's, it's common sense to do that. Um, you will recall that President Jonathan did four years. Um, he was denied the second term in 2015. That is number one reason why we are saying we should have a shot to complete the eight years that our zone should have. Secondly, the South South Zone is the only zone in this country where you have all the governors, all the states under the PDP uh, umbrella. You don't accentuate your weaknesses. You accentuate your strengths. The South South Zone is the strongest link in the country for the PDP. So it's common political sense to, 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 to imagine, to think, to accept the fact that, yeah, why not? The, the, the PDP in, in the South South has always done very well. In the 2019 elections, we gave, we gave the PDP about more than 2 million votes. That is a lot. So for us in the PDP in Edo State, we are saying that the, the leadership of our party at the national headquarters should consider the South-South zone for the, for the slot of the presidency. That's what we are saying. We're just, we're, we're, we, are, we are requesting they consider us. Now, you also mentioned in that statement that you think that the South-South zone and the governors have done very well. What exactly uh, have they done that we would consider very well? Because you were somewhat applauding all of the South-South governors. Yes. I mean, this, this, you see, some of these things are things you can touch. You can feel it. You can see it. I'm sure you watch the TV. You, you, all the governors in the South-South, there's no week a project is not commissioned in the South South. There's no week something is happening in the states in the South South. Tell me which other state in this country, as we speak, has anything close to the performances of my governor, uh, His Excellency Godin Obaseki. The, perform the performances of uh, Governor of uh, uh, Delta State, His Excellency uh, uh, Ifan Yokoa. Or for that matter, the Governor of River State, uh, governor uh, use of wiki or the one in the uh, acquirable emmanuel Udo. these are governors that are doing so well and everybody can see it and i challenge you uh mary tell me any other state where you have a governor uh, that is doing what these governors in the south south are doing say for the past one year and i will, I will let, let's compare those let's see and let's compare how much they are getting and let's compare what they are doing what projects they have they have embarked upon and how they have impacted the lives of the people in the zone 
I'm curious in their to, zones. I'm curious so, to ask Father what you mean by very well. Is it by doing the job that they were given, which is, I mean, let's start with Inyeso Wiki, for example. Commissioning roads, building flyovers. This is his job. This is why taxes are paid. Is that something we should be commending? I mean, that's not anything else of the ordinary. This is what governors who come and go do. Build roads, build flyovers. Is that something we should be applauding? See, see Mary, that is the problem I have when uh, people don't seem to get the drift. Every governor in this country was elected to deliver the dividends of democracy to his people. They have the, the money coming to coming to their coffers every month, uh, some more, some less. But I'm challenging you, like journalists, I'm challenging you, tell me any governor in, the, in this country that has done anything close to what my governors in the South South have done. It's a challenge. Tell me. So what the point I'm making is that from the little they are getting, they are doing this much. You can imagine if they take over the rest of the country. We're, we're in a mess in this country as we speak. This APC-led administration is a, is a right. Hmm. Interesting. Imagine if any or anybody in the South South takes over the rest of this country. We, 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 we will get it right. That's the point. The headship of the country matters. Okay. Let me push you further before I go so to the point Mr. I'm making. Let, let me push you a bit further. The before point I'm making, Mary. Just hold on. Let me push you a bit further on this. And I'm not in any way trying to vilify your governors, but I just want to really for you to really paint me a picture of what exactly you mean by these governors have done well. Now, Nigeria, as we speak, as of today, um, is one of the, con the country with one of the highest rates of unemployment worldwide. Now, we cannot just leave this buck at the table of Mr. President. Yes, he has his job cut out for him. And I'm not in any way trying to, you know, um, stand in for him or speak for the president. But governors in states also have, uh, you know, their part to play in this level of unemployment. So instead of us having more roads, and I'm not saying that we don't need infrastructure, but what about the young people that our universities are churning out every day um, into the streets? They're jobless, um, and so most of them are carrying arms, and we're seeing a lot of cultism, especially in the uh, Niger Delta, and all of those things. So um, how about the governors paid attention to those things? Is that not something that if they did, we'd probably be commending them, other than the the roads and the flyovers. Permit me to use those ones as examples. Well, well, I, I let, let's, let's, let me just first of all let you know that I'm an economist, uh, so I know I, 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 I have an idea of what it takes to create jobs. Um, building infrastructure is a starting point in creating jobs. You have to get those infrastructures in place. You can't just come and give people jobs at the state level, for instance. Uh, the federal government, the policies of the federal government, the policies of the state governments, they have to be in sync for this enabling environment for the private sector to create these jobs. But as you speak, who will invest when you cannot go to your farm, when you cannot go to your factory, when the federal government is not doing what it's supposed to do? Who will invest? Is it the state government that, that guarantees security? Yeah, that is in the exclusive list of the, of the, of the well, but, but it's part of their job. Take care of they, but, they, but it's part of the job. The governor of every state is the number one chief, uh, chief security officer. He also takes receipts of um, security votes. Excuse me. It's also, we know that the power is at the center, but please, the governor does have a duty to make sure that the people in his domain are safe. Now, uh, it, it's like we, we're having a very difficult conversation. We're not on the same page. You and I know, and everybody in Nigeria knows, that on paper, the governor is the chief secretary of his state. That's what is on paper. That's what the Constitution says. However, you and I also know that the governor does not appoint the commissioner of police. The governor does not appoint the director of SSS. The governor does not appoint any military officer, the, the, the brigade commander in the state. He does not. Those people are appointed in Abuja. 
and they are answerable to those in Abuja. But does he work with them? Does he have state have security meetings with government? those people? Does he not work with them and have state security meetings with them? He's still working with them, whether they report to him or not. Is there not a synergy that's every, supposed to happen? Every week, every week, I'm, I'm sure every governor in this country has security meetings with um, uh, the CP, the brigade commander, and the director of SSS in the state. But the point I'm making is they don't take directives from the governors. Those guys take directives from, from Abuja. They, are, they, are, they, take, they take orders from them in Abuja. The governors are, I would like to say, they, are, they cannot even give directives to these people. So squarely, Mary, I think, I think we cannot have a conversation on this without agreeing that the bulk of securing the lives and properties uh, of Nigeria lies lies squarely in the in the in the in the on the on the, on the, on the doorstep of Mr. President and his APC led administration. And they have failed woefully. Okay. And that's why we are saying give the South South a chance and we'll, we'll do better we'll, get, we'll do a better job. That's what that's what you're saying. Okay let me come to you Mr. Duran. Um I want to know in, okay. in this case of talking about zoning, had there been a prior understanding, a prior a statement or paper that was signed to say that there will be zoning for the PDP every year and then everybody's supposed to abide by it. Was there any such agreement? Thank you very much. Um, I want to tell you that uh, there is no agreement. But that is not to say that uh, the South South does not have legitimate claim to it. And uh, just as the chairman put it, all the governors in the South South have performed wonderfully well. They are the pride of PDP today. And if the demands are coming from them, it is legitimate. But having said that, PDP as a political party has not made up its mind where the presidency is coming from. All that we know is that we will look inward and outward. We will do everything humanly possible to see that we give Nigerian somebody that we put smiles on their face. Somebody that will correct the anomalies in the present administration. Somebody that Nigerian will see physically and by their virtue of their past that they will vote, cast their vote for the person and PDP. So as I'm talking to you right now, there is nothing on ground to say we have zoned it to any part of the country, but they have legitimate claim to it. So are you trying to insinuate that all of a sudden the PDP is no longer interested in the zone from which a party, um, or, uh, the presidential candidates will emerge from? You're now more interested in the person or the merit of whoever would be able to be more appealing to Nigerians. Is this, is this the new stance of the PDP or this is something that you're still working on? Because, I mean, parties, um, your, the opposition and other political parties, of course, are strategizing and, of course, um, covering grounds. I, I do not want to believe that the PDP is not ready for 2023. I've just told you now that if the issue of zoning is something we take see, we will look into at the appropriate time. But as I'm talking to you, when is the appropriate night, time? There has not been a decision when that is the it has been time? sold to any part of the country. When you just mentioned the word strat the word uh, planning and you know strategic planning. There is nothing wrong if PDP is still studying the situation so that we don't make a wrong choice of you know, either the personality or the zoning arrangement. Just leave it for us. Don't force, our, don't force the party out to say what they are not prepared for. What we are telling you is, inwardly, we know we are strategizing, and by the time we are ready, we will come out to tell Nigeria where we are going, where the presidency is coming from, and the person exactly that we are looking at. 
Let me just take you back to December 10 of 2020, and I'd like to quote. Uh, the party did say um, that they would not be drawn, and it's just re echoing what you're saying now, into zoning issues until, according to that statement, um, until the committee that was set up to review the party's performance in 2019's elections submits its report. And now this was actually a statement made by Prince Uche Sekundus. Has that report been presented? Has it been sub uh, submitted to the party? By the special grace of God, by this time tomorrow, the party will have received it. The ceremony is coming up at Wadata tomorrow by 12 noon. The report will be submitted and the NWC will see that, study it, realize where mistakes are, and correct those mistakes, it is after that that we can now come out to say, yes, this is where we want to go. Is it safe to say that that document is going to decide who you pick as um, someone who would run and be a flag bearer for the presidentials in 2023? It is our strategy. We okay. will look at the document, we will study it, we will review it, if there are uh, clarifications to be made, we will come for it. And at the end of the day, we will come out with something that Nigerian with CPDP as the Democratic Party, where we will choose a presidential candidate that will be acceptable to every Nigerian. I'm going to ask this question to both of you, both the Edo State Party Chairman and you, Mr. Diran. Um, again, in that statement by Prince Uche Sekundus, he did say, uh, he implied that the former president, good luck, Jonathan, um, was also amongst other people, you know, considered for the presidential uh, elections come 2023. In fact, he did say expressly that he was interested in running for 2023. So could the interest of the former president, good luck, Jonathan, be responsible for all of these agitations coming from the South South? Could that be? Is he the one that they're trying to front? You might choose to answer this directly or you could you know decide not to answer it but i'll start with you uh mr tony the uh, the agitation is not about it, an individual um i the agitation is about the zone uh don't forget when the pdp zones the pdp normally will not zone to an individual they will zone to the zone so it's within the zone that anybody who is interested will come up and then there will be a convention, uh, a, a, a primaries, a primaries organized where a presidential candidate will be picked. So if, president, if former president Jonathan is interested, he's welcome. Let him come, let him throw his heart into the field. Other people, I'm sure, will be very interested. Uh, if delegates uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the primaries decide that he's the one that will give us victory, well and good. But that in PDP, we normally will not zone to an individual. I will zone to the zone and let the, let the zone and other zones take that decision through a primary election that will be as usual uh, conducted in a very peaceful, transparent, and, uh, and uh, 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 efficient manner. Hmm. Mr. Duran, um, there seems to be um, you know, some bigger or tougher people, permit me to use that word, um, might not necessarily describe what I'm trying to say, but people who have become very known and tough and powerful in the PDP, uh, the likes of Governor Wiki and some other people. Um, the, why do you think the former president would want to push himself again or throw his hat into the ring, to borrow the words of Mr. Tony, um, for this election again when he has been president, um, maybe even served almost a two-term? Why do you think, would you, I mean, as a person, do you think it's a great idea for a former president to come back just a, a few, one tenure after he lost to um, the APC. Is that a great idea? As I'm talking to you right now, I have not had the former president, Gulag Jonathan, coming out to say he wants to contest again. So I wouldn't want to talk about him as a person. But I just read out a statement by as a Nigerian, Secondus. I, I did just read as out a Nigerian, a statement. And somebody who is covered by the constitution to, you know, to the contest, if he is interested, let him come out before we start discussing about him. But just as the chairman put it rightly, 
PDP is the Democratic Political Party. Whenever the position is zoned to a particular area, election will be conducted, except and unless if there is a consensus of opinion you know, among the leaders that they have agreed to choose an individual to represent the zone. Because in our constitution, it's either through consensus or by election. If not, you witness how uh, the former president, the presidential candidate, uh, Laji Abu Atiku Abubakar, emerged at, at Portacos. There will always be free, fair, and transparent primary election in any election. And that is why PDP is special. Okay. I'll, I'll ask one last question, uh, Mr. Durant. Um, let's talk about the, those leaving the PDP to the APC. Uh, like the um, mm. senator who did say that, um, Senator Mao Ohabama, who said that um, those people who are leaving the PDP to the APC are bread and butter politicians. As much as I want you to, to make a remark on what he has said, the obvious thing is that there are many more people leaving your party to the APC. What is responsible for this crisscrossing and again could it be that the a that the pdp or has the pdp lost its mojo what is attractive in apc for anybody to say he wants to join them they're the party in power as i'm talking to you now we all know the crisis we all know the crisis that is in nigeria today is it about corruption kidnapping killings here and there so where is the attraction if people now, now say they were attracted to apc I can assure you, some politicians are agib, any government in power. They have their personal reasons. They will, only, they will only dish out another reason for their exit from PDP. But the point I'm making is, if because of that, APC are now saying that they are still expecting more, it's just a political jive. Nobody among our governors, our senators, rep, are ready to join APC any further. If you see anybody joining them, they have their personal or malicious reasons. That is quite different from the way politics should be played. They are not helping our democracy. And it's quite unfortunate that we don't have a definite law that forbids anybody from waking up from PDP, uh, you know, overnight and joining the PC tomorrow. They are not helping our democracy and it's not good for us as a Nigeria. Interesting. Uh, Mary, Mary, if I may. Yes, please. If I may. Um, I cannot agree more with Senator Mao Ohambowa, who said those leaving the PDP to the APC are red and proper politicians. I will add, they are lily livered politicians. They are politicians that don't have balls. Most of those people that are leaving the PDP for the APC are those that have EFCC cases. And you remember mm -hmm. the former national chairman, this say, Join us, and your sins will be forgiven. And that, and that has been what has happened. Look at the go former governor of Gombe State, uh, uh, Senator Danjuma Goje. Once he, stopped, once he stopped his ambition to become the senior president, he see his, his EFCC file was wiped out, out was, was, was taken away. Uh, when um, other, other, all these, uh, these other former governors and former ministers joined APC, there are cases with the EFCC, you won't hear of it again. Hmm. So. It's so, so clear that these high-profile people from the country from the PDP to the APC are better and better politicians. I agree with that. They are really liberal. I, I, I will add that. And three, they don't have balls. Okay. Well, we're on live TV. You cannot use such words. Well, I want to say thank you to you. Um, Duran Odeyemi is the Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. And, of course, uh, Tony Aziegbemi is the Party Chairman for Edo State. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I thank you. It. All right, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, reps move for citizens to bear arms. Are you ready to do that? Stay with us. We'll be right back.